I, my brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. May the Holy Spirit be upon you. May you be filled with the Holy Spirit as I share this message from the Lord. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. This is taken straight from scripture, from 2 Chronicles 20. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Gisela. Hi, Heather. I was with a brother and sister in Christ a few months ago. And, and they've been in faith quite a lot longer than I have. And I was sharing with them some of how I've been led by the Holy Spirit into often into some of the early Psalms. And I also mentioned about 2 Chronicles 20 that I was first led into over a year ago. And in this last month or two, I've been led by the Spirit into 2 Chronicles 20 again to share. And I'm sharing it again here on this message. And this is a message from the Lord, but the brother and sister in Christ who I was with, um, the, the man, he was of the view and of the opinion that particularly when things are in Old Testament and it's describing things of what went on in those times, that that has been and gone. And that therefore that isn't something that you can take you now from, from say the Old Testament, from 2 Chronicles 20, and you can't take it and, and it's not to be applied now in, in the days that we are living in. But that is not what, on my heart, that is not, that is not what, I don't, I don't believe that. I, I believe that we can take what is in the Bible, we can take the blueprints, we can take the stories, we can take the, we can take the, the explanation of what the situation and circumstances was and then what happened and then what the result was and we can take it and we can apply it into our own life and this is this is from the lord this is this is not from my flesh this is a message from the lord he wants me to to read out to you 2 chronicles 20 because you may you may well be feeling you may well be experiencing challenges and battles in your life right now it may feel like you have got armies coming against you in your personal circumstances each of us will be going through our own experiences. You may be going through the fire. You may be going through, you may be going through a storm that you have never been through in your life before. You may be having things stripped away from you. You might be having relationships breaking down, family relationships breaking down. You might have lost your job. You may be getting pushed. You may be getting coerced. You may be being backed into a corner. Whatever you are going through, you are experiencing tremendous change in your life. There is no other way of there is no other way of putting it. And what God is doing in each and every one of us, he is stripping away our old wineskins, our old habits, our old behaviours, our old thought patterns, the things that we used to rely on, the things that we used to depend on. These things are being stripped away, our old wineskins, because you don't pour new wine into old wineskins because the old wineskins would burst under the pressure, ruining the new wine and of course, ruining the old wineskins. Instead, you pour new wine into new wineskins, preserving both the new wine and the wineskins. So in you and in me, our Father is creating in us new wineskins so that he can pour out new wine. Things that we used to believe in, things that we used to trust, things that we used to rely on, the, the home comforts, the the materialistic things, these are being stripped away. These are being stripped away. Sometimes it can be quite ruthless. Sometimes Jesus is trimming the branches, but other times he's ripping up roots, literally ripping up roots that don't belong to you as a new creation in Christ. I declare and decree, you have, you have not just been chosen and you're not forsaken, 
but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And for our Father to pour out new wine into you, for you to receive more and more goodness from our Father, more and more blessings, more and more breakthrough, he needs to cleanse you. He needs to cleanse me. He needs to refine us. We need to be refined by fire. There is no other way of doing it. But things have come into the world so suddenly in this last 18 months that you and me, will both have been going through very extreme challenges and battles and spiritual warfare. But our Father in heaven, we have to trust him. Whatever you've been going through, whatever dark valleys you've been going through, whatever changes you've been going through, whatever things, however much you've been pressed and crushed, we have to trust our Father in heaven. He has allowed these things to happen. There is a divine reason that these things have happened to us, that circumstances have happened. He is teaching us things. He is leading us. He is guiding us. He is stripping away the things that no longer serve us. And he is taking us to a place so different to what we have ever, we've ever experienced before. He's taking us to new heights. He is purifying our hearts and our minds so that we just have the heart of the Father, that we long for more and more of Jesus. We long for more and more of the word of God. We, we, we switch off from any kind of secular music and we just listen to praise and worship music and gospel music. We just listen to pure music that's going to edify us, that's going to fill us, that's going to, that's going to speak to us, that's going to resonate with us. The times are here now, the things of this world, the, the worldly things, the, 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 the passions and inclinations of our, of our sinful nature, our old heart's desires, the things that we used to rely on, going to the pub, going to restaurants, going to clubs, spending money that we didn't need to spend, spending excessively fancy cars, fancy clothes, fancy jewellery. These things mean nothing. These things mean nothing. If, for us to become a true disciple of Jesus, to truly surrender our life to Jesus. He has to do the things that he is doing in our life. We have to be sent through the fiery furnace. We have to be refined by fire. We have to have things revealed to us. We have to go through the pain. We have to go through agony. We have to go through loss. We have to experience these things for us to come into the truth that our identity is in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. Our identity isn't in what we have been led to think and feel about ourselves during our life. Our identity isn't in what our parents might have told us when we were younger. Our identity isn't in what our siblings may have told us about us. Our identity isn't what our best friend or some other friends have told us about us. Our identity isn't what we think about in our own mind about ourselves. if we were to compare ourselves to other people. Our identity isn't to be compared to people on television, musicians, pop stars, sports stars, famous people, our Father does not want you ever again comparing yourself to anyone else. Never ever again does he want you to compare him because in the body of Christ, we are all equal. There is no one greater, there is no one less. We are all equal. We are all part of the body of Christ. You, I declare and decree this now, you are precious in the eyes of our Father. You are the apple of his eye. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. You are chosen, not forsaken. If you were the only person on earth and you were watching this message now in, in a time in the future and you were the only person on earth, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, would have still been horrendously and horrifically crucified and nailed to that cross at Calvary and Jesus Christ still would have died a sinner's death on that cross at Calvary just for you. This is how much our Father in heaven loves you. If you were the only person on earth, Jesus would have died for you so that you can surrender your life to Jesus. You are so precious in our Father's eyes. He knows what you are going to say before you have even said it. He has numbered every hair on your head. His thoughts for you outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore. May you never again compare yourself with anyone else. 
May you just seek more and more of Jesus. May your heart's desire to, to long each day to become closer to Jesus, to have less of you and more of him, for you to die to yourself, for you to die to your flesh, for you to die to your sin nature, and for you to be led each day by the Holy Spirit, for you to seek each morning to be filled with the Holy Spirit, for you to say when you wake up in the morning, Father, thank you for my life. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your unfailing love. I give this day to you. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all else will be given unto me. I surrender my life to Jesus. I die to my flesh. You can do this every morning. Set out every morning to surrender your day to our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Let him lead you and guide you through the wonderful, life-changing Holy Spirit. So now, when I turn to 2 Chronicles 20, if you think about your life and your circumstances, but then you also may think about your life and about humanity and about how humanity appears to be surrounded on all sides by the wicked, by the evil, by all these pillars of society that are all in this together. It is like there is armies coming against the genuine people of the earth, the ones that aren't planning and committing evil acts. It can seem like there is armies coming against us. Well, this is a word for every single one of us. This is a word for you, both for your life, if you have had armies coming against you, if you have felt surrounded, but also for you and the body of Christ. And everyone in this world that has been under such tyrannical, such evil dictatorship and rulership and leadership, this planned evil agenda, but praise God, hallelujah, because God is revealing the sins of the world. God is revealing the evil and darkness and wickedness in this world. All things done in dark is being brought to light. Glory, glory, hallelujah. And there is a key message in 2 Chronicles 20. And a big part of this key message for you is the importance of praising and worshipping our Father in heaven, for you to lift your arms in the air, to praise and worship God Almighty, for you to sing and praise in spirit and in truth, to raise your arms, to let all inhibitions go, to just raise your arms to the air and say, God has numbered every hair on my head. God has numbered every hair on my head. God has numbered every hair on my head. His love is so unfailing. Jesus is my Saviour and Lord. Jesus is my Saviour and Lord. Jesus is my Saviour and Lord. He is my Saviour and Lord. Just raise your arms to praise and worship in spirit and in truth. Let me now read 2 Chronicles 20. And when it talks about armies coming against Jehoshaphat, think of it as the armies that have been coming against you. And think about, think about it as the armies in this world that have appeared to be coming against the civilians, the children of God around the world. Just think how much, how big, how big does this battle seem? This battle on earth, how, do, how big does it seem? It seems impossible. Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. 2 Chronicles 20. After this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Minyanites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at Hazazon Tamar. This was another name for En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. 
Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. Hallelujah. O our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honour your name. They said, Whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honoured. We can cry out to you to save us and you will hear us and rescue us. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt, so they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives and children. The Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benahi, son of Jeel, son of Metaniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jerul. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshipping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendour. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord, his faithful love endures forever. Hallelujah. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir to start fighting against themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of them. Not a single one of the army had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. Hallelujah. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing and other valuables more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. 
On the fourth day, they gathered to the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It is still called the Valley of Blessings today. Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps, lyres and trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Kelly. God bless you, Michelle. God bless you, Liz. God bless you, Khalees. God bless you, Victoria. God bless you, Mara. God bless you, Nicola. God bless you, Brother Adam. God bless you, Sheda. God bless you, Eduardo. God bless you, Johnny. God bless you, Tony. God bless you, Gisela. God bless you, Heather. God bless every single one of you. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus you have been blessed by that message, that these words from 2 Chronicles 20 have spoken to you, have given you strength. Our strength comes from the Lord. May you seek the Lord like you have never seeked him before. May you praise and worship our Lord like you have never praised him before. May you lift your arms in worship like you have never praised and worshipped before. May you worship in spirit and in truth. May you be filled with the Holy Spirit. May you be filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I pray and speak and declare and decree the word of God over your life. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. You are, you are a warrior in the army of God. The Lord of heaven's army has called you out of the darkness into his glorious light. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I will say that once more to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Go out against them tomorrow because the battle is not yours but God's. You are going to see victory. You are going to see breakthrough. You are going to see yourself living with more faith than you have ever had in your life. He is taking you higher. He is taking you higher in the heavenly realms. You are going to rise above. You are going to be speaking with, with more boldness and more authority than you have ever spoken before. You are going to be speaking and declaring and, de de and decreeing the word of God. You are going to be seeing demonic strongholds demolished. You are going to be see seeing breakthroughs. There are going to be people coming to you because of your prayers. You are going to be seeing breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. May the goosebumps of the Holy Spirit now be coming upon you like Sister Kelly Lynn. Yes, goosebumps of the Holy Spirit. Tingly feelings now. The tangible Holy Spirit. May the tangible Holy Spirit be upon you now. May you be feeling lighter. May you be feeling like a, a weight is lifted on you. Jesus said, cast your burdens on me because I care for you. Cast your burdens on me because I care for you. He wants you to be lighter. He wants you to feel free. He wants you to feel his presence. He wants you to feel the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. He wants you to experience the unfailing love of God that surpasses all understanding, that guards your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This is a message from the Lord to you. I am for you, not against you. I have called you by name. My hand is mighty upon you. I have anointed you. You are mine, says the Lord. You are mine, says the Lord. Have no fear. Instead, have my perfect love. I have not given you a spirit of fear, 
but of power, of love and of a sound mind. For I, the Lord, have spoken. I have called you out of darkness. I have called you out of that miry clay. I am with you in the fiery furnace and you will not get burnt up. You will not even smell of smoke when you come out of this fire. I am refining you by fire. Yes, for I, the Lord, have spoken. I have allowed the things that you have gone through in your life. I have allowed these things to happen. I have allowed the enemy to do certain things to you. But I, the Lord, have spoken. I am lifting lifting you out now. This is the victory is coming. The victory is coming. The breakthrough is coming because I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, I, the Lord, have spoken. The things that you have gone through, I have used these things to refine you. I have been refining you by fire. I have been teaching you things. I have been revealing these things to you. I have been giving you spiritual awareness and understanding and discernment that you have never had before. I am taking you higher. You are part of my army that I am rising up for I, the Lord, have spoken. You are my chosen generation. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, says the Lord. Yes, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, says the Lord. I am for you, not against you. Greater is the spirit in you than the spirit that is in the world, because I have put my spirit in you, says the Lord. Yes, you are mine, says the Lord. You are a mighty warrior in the army of the Lord of heaven's army, because I, the Lord, have spoken. You are mine, and you are going to be smashing and destroying demonic strongholds, for I, the Lord, Lord have spoken. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Share this message. Share this message. Speak, share, seek him, glorify him, worship in spirit and in truth. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Agape Paul.